There's a setting in your radio that, if you set it correctly, could give you significantly longer battery life than you're currently getting. And that's not as important on a radio like this Radio Master Boxer, which has a gigongous battery in the back. And I don't, I just don't have to charge this thing very often, even if I'm not getting as much life as I could be getting. But this is going to really matter if you've got a radio like the Radio Master Zorro, which that's a great radio, but it has really small batteries. And especially if you're using Express LRS at high output powers, it runs the batteries down really quickly. No matter what, you'd probably like to get as much life out of your battery as you can. And that's the topic that we're going to be going into in this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. The first thing we need to do in order to get the most out of our batteries is make sure that the that, make sure that the battery voltage that we're reading here in the radio is, is correct. Uh, okay. Well, ooh, mm. that's a little weird to begin with because the Zorro was saying that its batteries were at 6.5 volts, but the screen was like shaking and shutting down as if the batteries were like dying. And the batteries that are in here should be able to be run down to at least 3.0 volts and maybe a little lower. These are 18650, uh, no, 18350 lithium ion cells. They should go down to a minimum of 2.5 volts. So it makes me wonder if this is reading high and causing me to over discharge and damage my batteries. On the other side of that equation, if you've got your radio miscalibrated and you are reading low, then it's going to say your battery is empty and tell you that you need to charge it and stop using it before when there's really still some gas in the tank. The bottom line is that we need this calibration to be correct, and that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, this is going to be really easy to do on my Radio Master Boxer because the battery pack that I've got on my Boxer has a separate XT30 that we can use to measure the battery voltage. It's really best to measure the battery voltage while the battery is plugged into the radio because as soon as the radio starts pulling power from the battery, the voltage will drop a little bit, then that drop may be insignificant. Or if you're using a higher powered radio module, like a one watt Express LRS module, that may be enough power draw to actually cause noticeable voltage sag, which if you simply measured the battery voltage when it was unplugged from the radio would cause your calibration to be inaccurate. So uh, ideally your battery will have a way you can measure it while the radio is plugged in, turned on and reading. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a multimeter and you do want to use a multimeter for this and not like a battery checker because battery checkers are sometimes accurate, but oftentimes they're not actually that accurate and uh, accuracy is what we're going for here. So if you have a battery checker that you've like tested and cross checked and you believe is accurate, go for it. But if you're not sure, go with a multimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the multimeter into DC volts mode and we're going to plug the multimeter into the XT30. Oh, isn't that convenient? The prongs are just the right size to go in with a little bit of friction and we can get a reading of 7.53 volts. And uh, we're reading 7.6 volts here, which is pretty freaking close to accurate. I would take that. But if yours is not reading accurate, here's where you can go to change it. I'm going to press the sys key on my radio and I'm going to page to the hardware screen. And in the hardware screen, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for the bat calib option. In the bat calib option, we can see even more precision. It's reading 7.58 volts. So I can actually tweak this. I can click and when it's blinking, I can scroll and I can change the calibration values and try and get it as close as possible. 752, 758, 752, there we go. That is pretty dead on accurate. For the Radio Master Zorro, I'm gonna have to be a little clever uh, because the actual, There are two reasons I'm going to have to be clever. <laughs> I hate myself right now. <laughs> I had a problem where <laughs> these grips would slide off a little too easily. So I got some E6000 cement and I put just a little bit of E6000 on here to give it just a little tackiness and a little grip. And I've glued them, I've glued them on. They won't come off now. <laughs> so 
<laughs> well, it's okay. I, was, I wasn't going to do that anyway. So <laughs> that's okay because I don't think the best way to measure the voltage is to go in here anyway. On the Zorro, there is actually a plug right here that is not designed to take a two cell battery and let you use it as an auxiliary battery for uh, charging or for running in the field. However, I betcha that we can get battery voltage reading off of that as well. We're gonna need to be real careful because we don't want to short circuit these pins. How am I gonna do this? The safest way to do it would be to use a two cell balance lead. Do I wanna, let's just, let's just sacrifice a two cell battery. <laughs> this is a two cell battery that I don't mind sacrificing. And what I'm gonna do is first of all, one by one, I'm gonna cut the wires. Do not cut the wires at once. You'll short circuit them and make sparks or weld them. That is the wrong wire. Okay, well, fine. Uh, one by one, I'm gonna cut the balance bleed wires one at a time. One, two, three. Okay, great, that battery is toast. And what I'm gonna do is just strip those back with a set of alligator clips. Okay, alligator clips. And then I will, I wanna be real careful because as soon as I plug this in, I think this is gonna be live with LiPo cell voltage and I don't wanna create short circuits or any nonsense. So let's go ahead and clip these and we'll sort of cover that up as best we can so there's no short circuits. Okay, great. Now we should be good to go as soon as we plug this in, we should get a reading and nothing bad will happen, I hope. Great, amazing, yay, 6.71 volts. We are getting a reading, perfect. If I turn it on, what happens to the voltage? Welcome to HTX. 6.75, point. aha, it's way off. Transmitter battery low. It's way off. 5.9, 5 5.8, 5 it's reading 6.5. Okay, 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 it turns turn it off. Things are wonky right now. Should probably charge this up and calibrate when it is in more of a fully charged state, which is totally what I'm gonna do, but you get the idea. If you've got a radio like the TBS Tango 2, which has a fully internal battery, you are out of luck. I don't know how you'd have to open the radio up in order to test this. And if you've got a radio like this jumper that just takes 18650 cells, probably what I would do is open it up in the back and just stick the probes in like this to measure the voltage. Um, I'm not sure whether you're gonna get 1S or 2S voltage, it depends on how the, they're wired, but you would just need to measure in the appropriate location. Uh, same thing if you've got a little case like this that doesn't have a second plug, you would just go like this there we go, 2S voltage, uh, 7.24 volts. That's how you would do it, you just need to stick them in there. So that's step one, is making sure that your battery voltage is reading correctly. But there's another step that you don't wanna miss. I'm gonna tell you what it is, just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is completely up to you. You can change it or you can stop whenever you feel like it. Uh, patrons get access to my Discord server, which is, I'm told by the people who are on it, one of the best resources in FPV. Tons of helpful, friendly people out there who wanna talk about FPV, help you solve your problems. There's even a buy, sell, trade forum if you wanna you know, get rid of some used gear or try to pick something up on the cheap. But mostly what I hope you get out of signing up for my Patreon is the good feeling of giving back. Uh, I think of myself like a, a, a busker playing music as you head to work on the subway. Okay, not everybody likes buskers. Maybe this is a bad example. My point is I show up every day. I put my stuff out there and if you enjoy it, that makes me feel good. And eventually after you pass me enough times, then I hope you decide to throw, throw a buck in my hat and you do that by joining Patreon. If today's the day, then there's a link in the video description below where you can sign up. And if today's not the day, hey, that's cool. I'll be here tomorrow. I'll keep playing those songs or whatever it is the buskers do, and uh, maybe the day will come. The other setting that helps you get the maximum life out of your radio is here. We're gonna press the sys key and we're gonna page to the radio setup. And the first thing we want to look at is the bat range, the battery range. And that is going to be the voltage range for the 
little battery indicator here that shows where the battery is fully charged or empty. What I like to do for that one is I actually like to set the top of the range a little bit low. You see, it's set to 8.4 volts right now. My radio uses a two cell battery, so the maximum voltage it's gonna be at is 4.2 volts times two cells is 8.4 volts. But the truth is that the battery doesn't stay at 8.4 volts very long. As soon as you start using it, it immediately starts dropping. And that means that I almost never actually see my battery indicator as full, which kind of bugs me. I'd like it to stay full for a little while, just so I get that happy feeling of, ooh, I'm all topped off. So I like to take the top of the bat range and lower it down a little bit to like maybe 8.2 or maybe even 8.1 or maybe even 8.0. It's really up to you how sort of finely you wanna slice that. And as long as the battery is above that voltage, it will read as fully charged and I'll get the good feeling that my radio is all topped off. Then the other thing to change is the bottom of the range and that is where the battery will show as empty. And obviously you want that to be empty like just like your car doesn't go, ah, you're out of gas, good luck. And then your car stops running. Your car goes, hey, you're going to be out of gas in like 50 miles and starts yelling at you. I want the battery to show empty before it's really fully empty. And the answer to what empty is depends on what kind of battery you've got. If you have a lithium polymer battery, like in my boxer, this is just a lithium polymer uh, cell then the absolute minimum cell voltage is 3.0 volts. And just like you never want to really fully run your car out of gas, you never want to really want to fully run your battery out of voltage. So don't set this to 3.0 volts times two cells equals 6.0 volts. No, no, no. We want this to be a little bit more than that. And I think 6.4 volts is a perfectly good place for that to be. If, on the other hand, you have lithium ion cells, and usually lithium ion cells are going to look like this, although some cells that look like this are actually lithium polymer, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But most of these cells can run down to 2.5 volts instead of 3.0 volts. So in theory, if you have this type of cell, you could set your minimum to 6.0 volts for two cell or 3.0 volts for one cell, uh, and probably you'd be okay. But I would wanna test that to be 100% sure that the cells, if you set this to 3.0 volts or 6.0 volts, uh, and you run it down there and it just starts acting like my Zorro did at the beginning of the video, then you know you can't run the batteries down that low. But if you do have this kind of battery and you're only running them down to like 3.5 volts or per cell or seven volts for a two cell battery, you're actually leaving a lot of runtime on the table. You can run them significantly lower. So we're gonna set the bottom of the bat range based on what type of battery we have. For a LiPo, maybe 6.4, 6.5 volts. For a lithium ion, maybe as low as 6.0 volts. Uh, and then there's one more setting we're gonna to wanna to change, which is the alarms, the battery low alarm. And that is gonna tell us when the radio starts going battery low, transmitter battery low. And uh, you can set that, well, wherever you want. Like I set 6.4 volts is where my battery would show as empty. So let's just match that for the battery low warning. Although as you can see, you don't really have to, you can set them independently. And now we know that we can trust that this number being read is accurate. So we are going to be able to run our batteries as empty as we want them, but not over discharge them. And we know that our warnings and our battery readout are giving us information that we understand and agree with. And that is gonna let us get the maximum battery life out of our controller. Throughout this video, I've been talking to you about cell count and battery voltage, max voltage, min voltage, and so on. and I hope that all of that stuff is like, yeah, obviously, Bardwell, I know how to use batteries. Because if you don't know how to use batteries, you could be at risk of starting a battery fire and having a catastrophe. If you want to be sure that you are not at risk of that, I've got a video about LiPo battery safety that goes over a lot of these concepts, including safe charging. And I'm going to put a card to it here uh, on screen. In addition, I've got another video that answers the question, how do I know if a battery is safe to keep using or should I just get rid of it? And I'm going to put the card to that on screen as well as links in the video description below. If you haven't seen those videos already, you need to check them out. They're too important to overlook. See you there.